Okay, so welcome to South Pole Saturday on a Sunday with, um, with, uh, filming with my video camera instead of the computer, so hopefully the quality will be a bit better. We'll see. Today I wanted to discuss, um, sort of the community in a whole, sort of inclusivity within the community. I feel like I've had videos, and some of us have had videos that have touched on this point, but, um, my, I'll use a Tumblr post as an example. There was this post about um, about using kittens as a metaphor, saying, you know, there's this whole litter of kittens, and people will go and they'll say, you know, I only want these kittens and not these kittens, or, you know, those are those aren't the ones that I want. I only want these, and but all the kittens, you know, even though some might be striped, some might be ginger kittens, some might be you know, have long tails, no tails, they're all still together. They all want to stay together. They're all st still part of the same bunch. And they all just want to be accepted, equally accepted. And uh, that's sort of used to be how some people are like, oh, well, we'll talk about romantic aces, but we won't talk about those aromantics. Or, oh yeah, we'll talk about um, asexuals in general, but not those demisexuals. And, um, you know, why? 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 We're all the same little bunch of kittens. Um, but really, we are all part of the same community, no matter how we identify. And uh, it's really unfair to uh, to focus, I guess, on um, one group when we do visibility and other kinds of things uh, to say, you know, this is the pure asexual, this is the gold standard, we have discussed this, but um, recently there's been um, there's been some things on Tumblr about how um, aromantics in general feel left out because um, sometimes, sometimes we do this, when we come out we'll say, you know, oh, it's okay, we're asexual, but don't worry, we still experience romantic attraction, and that's really invalidating to the aromantics out there and it's it's like we're saying we don't want them to be part of the community and that's BS because you're all awesome no matter how you identify um, if you identify with a romantic orientation and um, that's just really it's just really unfair especially because I've been having those sort of debates myself recently uh, where I fit in the spectrum hey, romantics over here and romantics over here. And I rewatched um, Nini's video recently on um, how she identifies, particularly because, as you all know, Nini is uh, aromantic and in a romantic relationship with Sassy. And um, how does that work? Oh my goodness, watch Nini's video. The point is that there are also so many different definitions for all these things. I mean, romantic is pretty clear cut that you experience romantic attraction and you know, various people define that as various things. Um, but the definition for aromantic, I think, is much more of a personal thing. Um, sort of an individual basis. Um, for example, you could say romantic, it's the lack of experiencing romantic attraction. But, um, Nini doesn't define it that way, and I'm sure other aromantics define it differently. And then I get to myself thinking, you know, what is demi-romantic then? Because that's how I identify now, demi-panromantic, because I know that I do experience romantic attraction, but I, it's not a common occurrence. And I also don't know what that means to me. Maybe some of you can understand how that is, you know, because I'll feel these things, but then it's it's complicated where to go from there, because I have, I guess I, in this wibbly wobbly area between romantic and aromantic, I sort of feel like romantic aces, when they feel romantic attraction, go from there to sort of pursuing a relationship, but um, I don't know, are relationships the be-all and end-all of existence? Because I really don't think they are. You know, it's, like, I've been thinking to myself, you know, I want something that's more 
than a relationship. Not to say that there's anything wrong with romantic relationships, but all the sort of stereotypes and things that go along with that aren't my cup of tea. So I don't, I've been in this kind of muddly, how do I define things? What do I want from things? Space, that's super confusing. And um, I was wondering if any of you had possibly similar experience is, yeah. Like I mentioned some of this stuff in my other video recently from last week, so you can go watch that if you're bored out of your mind for some reason. Anyway, I guess in the needs of you led me to think about things, to think about a lot of things, and I love that sort of stuff, I guess. Um, I know a lot of people feel uncomfortable with these muddly, not sure you know, how to identify or what they want situations, but I always look at it as a kind of opportunity to discover more about myself and about my needs and that sort of thing, so I'm pretty excited. I feel like I'm on an adventure. I think I sort of got off topic for a bit there, but it was sort of a combination demi-romantic inclusion video mishmash. But yes, I think that definitely we get a lot of um, hate enough and intolerance from outside the community, and even sometimes from the queer community, and that all of that just makes it more essential that we stick with each other, that we don't kick anyone out for being who they are, and that we just embrace the whole diversity that exists in the asexual umbrella. Peace out.